Hey, what's going on everyone? Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 different saints in statue form, and I'm going to show you different ways that you could identify them based on certain characteristics that they usually have. Now, the information I'm going to share with you is information that will generalize to depictions of the saints in other formats uh, besides statue form. But um, the statues is what I really want to focus on because I tend to find a lot of them uh, at estate sales. And you sometimes will find some of them uh, at garage sales as well. And once in a while, uh, they will pop up at flea markets and uh, other venues like rummage sales. Uh, and stuff. So it's real important to be able to have this knowledge uh, as much as possible at your fingertips because it helps you to identify potential value really quickly and it helps you to be able to comp them uh, easier by knowing what search terms uh, to type in. Now, as a brief disclaimer before I go into the presentation here, uh, if it sounds a little tacky to you to be talking about making money off of religious items, um, I understand that, and this might not be for everybody. There are some people who feel a little weird, uh, a little uneasy selling religious items, uh, not just statues, but also Bibles and rosary beads and, and stuff like that. Uh, so I respect that, but um, my perspective on it is that especially during this time, you know, during COVID times, um, you know, there's a lot of people who really could benefit from the spiritual comfort that they get from religious items, be it, you know, Bible or be it, uh, you know, something from another uh, religion and particularly religious statues, because, you know, a lot of people are alone, a lot of, you know, elderly people are alone and having a statue like that around them, you know, could really, uh, you know, make them feel comforted. So, you know, it, it, it's a good service that uh, resellers um, provide, but that that's true, you know, in a pandemic or outside of a pandemic is just emphasized uh, uh, nowadays. So uh, let me share my screen uh, with you. Um, actually, one other thing before I do that is that I want to make sure I'm very clear on this, that this is not meant to be any kind of religious uh, preachy video in that way. I don't do anything like that, nor do I do anything like that with politics. But, um, you know, political stuff is, is stuff that I sometimes will uh, sell as well. But again, it's not meant to be anything preachy. Uh, in fact, I have a great interest of many religions. We're going to focus on saints that are uh, within the realm of Roman Catholicism. There's over 10,000 saints, by the way, that have been recognized uh, in the Roman Catholic uh, religion, the majority of whom, by the way, are men. So that's another disclaimer. That's you know, the majority of the ones I'm going to show you today are men, but that's just because of the percentages. But it's important to recognize the uh, female saints, the women saints, because uh, a mistake that a lot of people will make is sometimes think that any, you know, female religious statue that they see is the Virgin Mary. So if you list it that way, it, you know, you're not going to get the people who are searching for that specific saint, for example, and you can wind up uh, you know, losing out uh, in that way. But I have interests in many religions. Uh, my favorite course or one of my favorite courses that I took in college was uh, Religions of Asia and also took a course in Judaism. And this is me at a Jesuit college, by the way. So, you know, they taught all different religions and it was uh, very, very interesting. And so it's something I've, I've always had an interest in uh, going back to when I was uh, younger and uh, raised with a lot of information about uh, Roman Catholicism. So uh, I'm going to share my screen with you now and jump into the uh, presentation here. I put a little uh, PowerPoint uh, uh, slideshow together for you. So we are going to start with uh, none other than St. Anthony of Padua. Now, <laughs> For those of you who have been watching recently, you might remember me sourcing this exact statue. Uh, this is my photo right here, which you might also remember from the photo tip video. This actually goes down as my favorite photo I ever took because not only did I get sunbeams coming down on him, but I got colored sunbeams coming down on him. So it really emphasizes the religious and spiritual nature of him. If you remember, I sourced him for... Uh, $8 at an estate sale. And this was like midway through the estate sale. I hit up the basement first and I found St. Anthony uh, upstairs hanging out on one of the shelves. 
and uh, you know just just pick them up. So uh, he wound up selling very shortly after I I listed him for a hundred and twenty five dollars. So hopefully I have your attention with that, showing you the you know the value. Uh, now he was a ceramic uh, statue. Now Saint Anthony is the patron saint of forgetting things, and this is going to be a theme that comes up with many of the saints, is that they often have. Um, you know, this patron quality, a patronage associated with them. Uh, and a patronage basically means that they are designated as looking over some um, particular, either it could be a, a, a country, it could be a city that they look over, it could be a particular um, act or an action, or it can be a particular a type of animal that they look over, a certain thing that they look over that they're known for, uh, a certain craft that they're associated with. And so uh, that, that again, is going to come up uh, as a theme. And sometimes that theme will, will be depicted on the statue itself. Now, with, with St. Anthony, um, one of the ways to identify uh, him is that he usually has lilies associated with him and lily stalks. And you could see the lily stalk uh, on the picture there uh, over to the uh, right as well, but you know it's also there uh, on the left. Now the lily stalk uh, rep is designed to represent his purity uh, with it being white. Now another thing uh, that I want to point out is that he's holding uh, baby Jesus. Now, in and of itself, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's St. Anthony, because as you'll see later, St. Joseph is also, um, you know, often depicted as uh, holding uh, baby Jesus as well. But uh, something else that you could look for that will identify St. Anthony is the top of his head. Now, a lot of people mistake that for a hat, but St. Anthony was not rocking a hat back in the day. You know, they did, it wasn't, that wasn't what he was, uh, that's not what he was wearing. That's not what you see up there. Uh, back in the day, how people really represented themselves was not so much with, with hats back then, but it was with their hairstyles. And this particular hairstyle, and you could see it a little bit more over to the right, in which he has the, it's really a circular band uh, of hair, and the middle of it is. Uh, is is actually bald. And so that is called, as you can see there, that's called a tonsure. And that is um, something that was done to represent a religious uh, humility that you would you know, set your hairstyle up like that. So you look for that combination of features. Uh, you could see also as rosary beads uh, associated with them as well, but uh, many saints uh, have that. And he also has a rope uh, that's hanging down from him as well, which is another thing that you'll sometimes see associated with St. Anthony. Now, keep in mind when I go through these different saints, uh, I'm showing you the main way they are usually depicted, but there are obviously other ways they are sometimes depicted. But you know, again, I want to show you what will you know get you success most of the time in identifying the saints. So the next one I'm going to show you is one that I also found at an estate sale, picked up for just a couple of dollars. Uh, this is St. Teresa of uh, Avila. And uh, she wound up selling for $50 within about a day of me uh, listing her. And what is really the key thing to be able to identify St. Teresa of Avila is right down on the bottom and it could easily be missed. And it's often on the side of her, on the bottom, on top of, uh, of a book. Now that book is going to be important in a moment, as well as the book that you see that she's holding. But that is actually, that is a hat that she was, uh, that she is shown uh, having on the left picture on the bottom, and you can see on the right, she is shown uh, wearing it. That is called a Beretta. Um, not a beret, but a uh, it's a Beretta. And that actually signifies that she is considered a doctor of the church. And there are some saints that have that uh, designation. And what that means is that she is considered to have made a significant a contribution to you know to theology uh, through her research and her writing and her studies, which is why she is uh, usually shown having books near her. Hence the book on the bottom, and then she has a book there, which is you know generally considered that she's you know holding a Bible right there. Um, but 
uh, because uh, she's um, you know considered uh, you know and so respected for her writings, she is actually the patron saint of writers. So when writers are going through writer's block, uh, they will often pray to Saint uh, Teresa of Avila, just like with Saint Anthony, since he's the patron saint of forgetting things, people will pray to him uh, if they forget something. And then uh, of course, if they find it, they say, Saint Anthony, help me you know, find the item. So um, she is known for that. Uh, she is also someone who is prayed prayed to when uh, people have headaches or migraines because that was one of the things that she wrote about a lot uh, in her writings were the terrible uh, headaches uh, that she suffered. So, uh, you know, just some little tidbits there uh, to keep in mind. So that's um, one of our uh, female saints here. Now, the next one, now this is for the long time prime timers. I'd be curious if any of you long timers like, you know, Esme, for example, uh, remember me sourcing this with Mrs. Primetime at a garage sale years ago. I really had to go through my files to find this photo. Uh, and at the time, you know, I was really fascinated in doing some research to, you know, figure out who it was. And it turns out that it is uh, St. Paul. And the way to identify that this is St. Paul, as you can see on the right and the left, now he's, this one he's made uh, purely of wood, is he's holding the sword. And the sword is designed to represent his martyrdom because uh, St. Paul uh, was beheaded. Now, he's also holding a um, you know, religious book in his hand, um, you know, typically considered uh, to be a Bible. He normally has a, um, you know, a beard like that, a longer beard. I wound up selling him, by the way, for around $75 and, and sourced him for five bucks uh, at, the, uh, at the garage sale. Uh, he is the uh, patron, uh, patron, uh, sorry, saint of uh, missionaries, theologians, and uh, evangelists, and of end of London. So that's some information there about Paul. You see that sword? That is a, a clue, uh, but it you know it's not definitive. It's not always. You've got to look at some other things. So if he's holding the Bible, has a long beard. You look at those uh, combinations, and um, you know that could clue you in on on who it is. So. There's the arrows there, just going to those things. Okay, now, this is another uh, saint that I found recently. In fact, he's hanging out behind me here. He's, uh, you know, preaching to the uh, Pink Panthers over there earlier. This is good old St. Francis. Now, I currently have St. Francis uh, listed, St. Francis of Assisi, and um, or some people will say Assisi. Uh, he is um, often shown with birds or animals around him because uh, he was described as preaching to the birds and of preaching to animals. So while he's often shown uh, with the birds, as you could see me pointing to an arrow, sometimes it's one bird, sometimes it's two birds. They could be you know, various colors, uh, but you often see him associated with, um, uh, with some type of animal. Um, and usually you'll see a, a crucifix uh, hanging from him as well. And because of his uh, affinity and love for animals, he is considered a patron saint of animals and also of the environment uh, and of uh, Italy. Uh, he also is basically written about as not like, you know, some sometimes, you know, you hear of like the dog whisperer, someone who could, you know, talk to a certain type of uh, animal and be able to communicate with them. But he was thought of as being able to do this with all sorts of animals. And there is a story of him uh, saving a town uh, from a wolf that was eating people in the town. And St. Francis went up to the wolf and communicated with the wolf and, you know, did the sign of the cross and the wolf uh, made an agreement with him not to eat anybody else uh, in the town. So, you know, if you're, if you're having, uh, you know, a problem with an animal in your house, you might pray to St. Francis and hope that he helps you out. Uh, or you might pick him up in my eBay store because I have him for sale right now. He's eight inches tall and uh, he's about, he's worth about $40 or so. Um, now, he, you also have to check the markings of the statue, where they're made uh, on the bottom. And I show this in one of my videos. Uh, this St. Francis statue is made uh, by a company called Lefton, uh, which made a lot of ceramic items in Japan. And that also helps to increase the value. So it's not just the saint. It also depends on what the saint is made out of, how tall the saint is, you know, how detailed the 
uh, features are on the Saint. There's all sorts of things that are going to go into the value. So, you know, don't think that every single Saint Anthony or Saint Teresa of Avila or Saint, you know, Francis is always worth something. It really, uh, you know, does depend on the craftsmanship and a lot of other features like size that go into it. Okay, now next one, and this is a this is a very large uh, statue, by the way, of Saint Michael. Uh, this one actually sold for two thousand dollars. It's it's fifty three inches. So um, just take that information and and realize you're not always going to, you know, find something necessarily this large. But just you know, just just be able to recognize these characteristics. And so if you find scaled down versions of them, then you would just scale down, you know, what you would ask for it. Now, this is a good example of what I was talking about that not all saints shown with uh, swords are, you know, one particular uh, type of saint. You know, so like, you know, not every saint with a sword, for example, is St. Paul. This is uh, St. Michael holding a sword. But when St. Michael is holding the sword, he's usually holding it in a more threatening position because he's typically uh, shown as a slaying Lucifer, which you could see over to the right. Now, a lot of the statues don't have Lucifer uh, attached to the St. Uh, Michael uh, statue, but some of them do. And you could tell that it's Lucifer because when you look, if you see my little arrow there, you could see that there's a, a serpent tail and that will be your clue right there because he is you know, a, a serpentine uh, type of creature. Now, the way that you would easily distinguish St. Michael from St. Paul is that St. Michael has wings, which is why he's called the archangel. Uh, St. Paul does not uh, have wings. So, and sometimes you'll see them with a little uh, scale there uh, as well, as you could see um, over to the, uh, as you could see over to the right. And the, the reason for that is because uh, St. Michael was considered uh, a saint who, you know, when he would evaluate you, he would weigh your merits. He would weigh the good and the bad. And so that's why sometimes you will see him with that, with the scale. It's not the scale of of justice or anything like that. Now he's considered the uh, patron uh, saint of grocers, of mariners, of paratroopers, uh, police officers, and military personnel. So now you can see why, as I'm going through all these different patronages, why you know people would uh, purchase some of these saints. So if you're someone, for example, who wants to give a saint to somebody who is you know in the military you would gravitate towards a St. Michael uh, statue, for example. And so, you know, you know, people who purchase the saints, you know, tend to be people who, you know, have some type of, uh, you know, personal association with something the saint uh, represents. So that's that one here. And um, just pointing out the wings and the sword there with the arrows. Now, how can we leave out good old St. Patrick? He's, uh, you know, celebrated every March for St. Patrick's Day. And, uh, you know, of course, the green would be a giveaway if you were, you know, trying to figure out who it is, because that would obviously uh, represent Ireland. But not every statue is he going to appear green. So if he doesn't appear green, then you're going to want to look for some other uh, things here. Now, this particular statue here is 60 inches and sold for eighteen hundred dollars. But again, you know, just think that you could find scaled down versions of them of them like I do at estate sales. Now, one of the things that's going to be a dead giveaway that it's St. Patrick is you're going to see snakes at his feet because St. Patrick is um, given credit for ridding Ireland of steak, uh, of stakes. <laughs> Steaks. He didn't rid them of steaks. They'd probably be mad at him if he rid them of steaks. I I'd be mad at him. I love steaks. So no, snakes. So <laughs> he rid them of snakes. Um, now, as it turns out, you know, based on scientific evidence, you know, sometimes there's this clash between science and religion. Um, you know, scientific evidence based on fossils and stuff, and you know, just looking at geology doesn't show any indication that there ever were any snakes around in post-glacial Ireland for St. Patrick to banish anyway. But uh, nonetheless, he is uh, he is given credit for it. So if you uh, find a snake around, you know, you might uh, pray to St. Patrick to help uh, to help you get rid of the snake. Now, another thing that you will often find, which kind of can remind you of a snake because it is curled, is this uh, crozier. Um, staff. It's basically a curled staff. So that's one of the things that you will uh, find as well. And another another thing you'll find associated 
uh, with him is th that particular hat, that pointed hat, which bishops often wear. Same thing with that staff, by the way. That's the type of staff that bishops would often wear. Uh, that is called the, the, the mitre. Uh, a hat right there. So you often see those things. Sometimes due to his association with Ireland, you also find him holding a shamrock or wearing a shamrock uh, somewhere uh, on him. So uh, there you go. That is, uh, that is, that is St. Patrick right there. So let's go over. And he obviously is the patron saint of Ireland. Now what Joseph, uh, Joseph is the best way to describe uh, Joseph is that he just kind of looks like, you know, the number one dad, you know, that, that's the best way to describe him. Cause that's, that's really, you know, who he is really, you know, if you think about it, he is like the number one dad, you know, he looks like the typical dad. He's always shown, um, you know, holding and, you know, coddling um, the, the baby Jesus in some way in his arms, sometimes perched up a little more uh, on the shoulder. Uh, as well. He is also associated with lilies. So sometimes you will see these similar types of flowers cross over uh, into uh, into different uh, religious statues. Now, this particular one that you see on the left, that one is a 25-inch wood statue. So that is something that you uh, could find. That one actually sold for $1,600. Uh, and you could see there uh, right over here where I'm moving my uh, mouse cursor, there's the lilies right there, which are represented more clearly in this colorful statue that you see over here. That's a five foot tall statue. That's much bigger than the one that you see over there on the left. Uh, and that one sold for $1,400. So uh, he's, for, for those of you who you know are, are fluent in this, I mean, he typically represented as a a carpenter. And for that reason, he is considered the patron saint of carpenters. Uh, he's also considered the patron saint of many laborers as a result of his work in carpentry. Um, you know, various uh, immigrants, um, um, you know, um, explorers, um, travelers, uh, engineers, realtors as well. Realtors uh, have a strong association with uh, St. Patrick, because there has been this, uh, not St. Patrick, sorry, St. Joseph, because he has been associated with helping to sell houses. Now, there's a lot of different theories on how this legend basically emerged that St. Joseph will help you if you're trying to sell a house. And there's no really clear, definitive answer on the actual origin of it. But what people will do is they will purchase St. Joseph's statues and they will bury them in their yard when they have their house for sale. And they you know, will hope and pray that that will help them sell the house. Now, this legend of St. Joseph being able to help with that has become so popular that there are people that have actually created St. Joseph statues, mini statues, uh, you know, some of these only sell for like 10, 20 bucks that you actually purchase for this purpose. You could see there, it's actually called, you know, home sale practice. And it includes some, you know, some other little things, pamphlets and stuff. And you would actually purchase that. And, you know, it's actually literally designed to be buried to help uh, sell a house. So, that's St. Joseph, folks. Um, a lot of interesting things uh, about uh, about St. Joseph. Now, this is the other uh, female saint that I wanted to share with you here. This is St. Uh, Therese of Lisieux, and uh, she is a more a modern saint. The particular statue that you see over there to the left, uh, that one sold for $1,200. It's a 60-inch fiberglass statue. Now she, like I said, she lived more recently from 1873 to 1897. Um, and she passed away at, actually at age 24 from tuberculosis. So she did not live long, uh, but she still did uh, achieve a sainthood uh, from the way that she lived her life and expressed her spirituality. Um, the main way that you will identify uh, St. Therese is through the roses um, and so you could see there that she is depicted holding roses there to the left. And you could see it more clearly on the right where we have color. As you can see there, it says, I will send down a shower. This is something she said. I will send down a shower of roses from the heavens. I will spend my heaven doing good upon earth. So if you could 
make that association there. See, that's different from the uh, St. Teresa of Avila, who I showed you earlier, who had the Beretta uh, and the um, and the books uh, surrounding her, which she does not have. So that's how you would separate the two. If you're just focusing on the headdress and the face, a lot of them are going to look uh, uh, very similar. So there we go. So now the next one is St. Luke the Evangelist. Um, now this is just another example of the different types of uh, materials that are used to make these different statues. So this one here to the left, uh, this one is made of uh, cast iron. It's a 20 inch cast iron statue that's sold for $1,000. These are all sales, by the way, that took place on eBay. Uh, you can see that it's vintage and there is some fading of it uh, uh, there. Now, often uh, St. Luke is depicted as looking up for inspiration. Uh, because he is one of the uh, authors of the Gospels. And so you'll often see him looking up. Uh, he is a patron saint, by the way, of artists, physicians, bachelors. So are you listening, fellas? Bachelors, you know, you might want to say a little prayer to St. Luke this weekend if you're going out. I'm just saying. And uh, surgeons, students, and butchers, by the way. Uh, and that's why you could see there down on the bottom here, you could see that there is a uh, a a cow's head uh, down there as well. So that is St. Luke. And the last one we are going to end off with uh, is, is not as known as some of the other saints, um, but this is good old St. Hubert. And if you see St. Hubert, um, you're going to be able to identify him very easily because he's almost always associated with a deer around him. Now this statue over here to the left sold for $1,000. It's a 20-inch wood carving. Now, the story of St. Hubert is that he came across um, a, a deer, a stag, when he was in the woods, and he was confused when he looked at the deer. And you can't see it well, really, in the picture on the left, but in the one in the center there, you'll see up top, I have the arrow uh, pointing over to the uh, crucifix uh, between the antlers. And so, uh, basically, what happened in the story is that the deer communicated uh, with St. Hubert and basically told him that he really needed needed to change his life around and that he needed to follow the Lord and started teaching him different ways about humane hunting. For example, you know, if you see a, a female deer, you know, a mother deer uh, in the wintertime, especially, uh, you know, with the young around them, that you don't kill the female uh, deer because you know then the young would not have a way uh, to find food. And so he is considered a patron uh, saint of hunting and particularly uh, ethical uh, hunting as well. So uh, that is Saint Hubert, and hopefully, if you uh, if you're out there, uh, you will be able to identify him. And you'll also often see him with this uh, you know horn shaped uh, object around his neck as well as you could see. Uh, in both of the pictures. So anyway, that is the review of the saints. And um, I hope that you found it helpful. I know it was a little bit of a longer video, but there was a lot to go over. So if you want to see follow-ups uh, to this type of video, uh, let me know that uh, down below. If you'd like to see other religions covered, uh, other religious artifacts, for example, uh, let me know that. And I'll be happy to do uh, videos on that. I love this uh, type of stuff. Again, please keep in mind in no way, shape or form was this considered to be or or, or intended to be any type of uh, preaching type of video. It was just a way to uh, start off because again, uh, as I showed you with the first four statues, these are statues that I sell in my reselling business. I come across them uh, often. And so I want to pass that information uh, on to you, especially, you know, if you, you know, didn't grow up with this type of, you know, information that it would be, you know, kind of ready and at your fingertips, this really can uh, uh, help you out. Uh, so a uh, little sidebar just to update people on the uh, merchandising store down below for the Primetime Treasure Hunter General Store is that uh, we did add other items. So people have messaged me after I announced the t-shirt and said, wow, it'd be great if you had mugs, for example. And uh, there are mugs now available, different types of items, uh, face masks and stuff, uh, hoodies. It's getting cool out soon. So we have a whole bunch of things and we're going to keep adding things going forwards. So thanks for all of you who have made a purchase uh, through that. And um, for anyone who's interested in it, I have a link down in the description section and also uh, down below in the video you'll see it scrolling ac across 
uh, any purchases uh, of those items do help to uh, support uh, the channel and the research and the time that goes into creating uh, this type of content. So just appreciate uh, everybody. Of course, no obligation for anyone to purchase any of that stuff, but uh, I do want to make sure I express my gratitude to those who do. So again, hope you like this one and I'll see you back the next one, everyone. Take care.